Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our first talk. Can everyone hear me okay? So this is our first in the series that we're starting this year called Adventures in Special Librarianship that Basia had started. She has already speakers lined up. And Ian is our very first this um, semester. So I'm going to introduce Basia, who will introduce Ian, and we'll get the talk going. Hi, everybody. My name is Basia Belaska Elliott, and I am the president of the SJSU iSchool student group. Uh, thank you for introducing me, uh, Grace. And um, thank you for everybody for joining us tonight. It is my great pleasure to present tonight um, Ian Matson. Ian, who is a recent graduate of um, iSchool, has already had a sort of a storied resume including working for such great institutions as um, the Bodleian Library, University of Oxford, the luxury clothing um, e-retailer net porter and one of the most beloved cooking institutions in the US, and I think um, um, public broadcasting television's TV shows, America's Test, Test Kitchen. So um, tonight, Ian will be talking about digital asset management. And without further ado, let me turn the mic over to our guest. Welcome, Ian. Um, thank you for agreeing to talk to us tonight. We're very excited about our talk. And um, thank you again. Please take the mic. Well, thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, it's a great honor to, to be with you and presenting uh, to uh, information professional uh, peers. And, uh, and also, uh, thank you very much for, for that warm introduction. Uh, my name is Jan Matson. Uh, it's, it's pronounced Jan, uh, though it's spelled like Ian. I'm sorry, I didn't I mention that to you guys beforehand. Um, but before I started um, and dove into my presentation, I wanted to quickly just go over my uh, outline and the structure of the talk. Um, I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'll then go ahead and tell you about the company I work for, uh, America's Test Kitchen, though I think that some of you know, know about, uh, about that company. Um, but it won't hurt to go over a few things. Uh, then I'll take some time to define what digital asset management is and what digital asset management systems are. Uh, then I'll tell you a little bit about why I chose digital asset management as a career path. And then I'll talk about my career path and how I ended up where I am now. And then uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, some library and information uh, science subjects uh, that, um, that feel are important to digital asset management. You might find a few that you know about or that you, you use in, the, in your workplace, or perhaps uh, you were taking some courses or considering some course, taking some courses at the university that you're with now. Um, and then I'll, I'll uh, wrap up by, by uh, sharing some suggestions with, with anybody who are, who's interested in making digital asset management uh, a career path or a career choice. And we'll finish up with some questions. And uh, one, one last thing that I just wanted to, to share with you is I, I have a tendency to, to, to use a lot of acronyms. Uh, among, among them is DAM, uh, which uh, by saying DAM, I don't mean the, the thing that holds back water and prevents uh, or it prevents uh, rivers from uh, flooding different cities, uh, but, but digital asset management. And then the other ones I sometimes use is uh, LIS, or, or Library Information Science. So uh, just bear with me if I, if I use those, um, or if they're in my slides, um, you know, forgive me. And uh, if they're at all confusing, please, uh, please let me know. So I work uh, as a digital asset management uh, specialist with America's Test Kitchen. And um, I've been through a few different places over the last few years. Um, yeah, between 2003 and 2011, I was in San Francisco. Uh, most of that time was spent working for a company called Rough House. They're a, a post-production or a video editing boutique. And um, after, uh, after I worked there at about, uh, in 2011, I flew over to, um, to England and worked uh, lived in Oxford and, and worked part of that time in London. Uh, and that's where I worked with uh, Netta Parte uh, as the digital asset junior technician there. And in 2004, 
I uh, flew flew back to the states and um, and have been working uh, in Boston uh, or the outskirts of Boston at America's Test Kitchen as their uh, spe damn specialist. So before I, I, I really launch to, to all of my different topics here, I wanted to learn a little bit about you, everyone who's attending the, the, the seminar tonight. Uh, how many are you, of you are MLIS uh, graduate students? You want to raise your hands? Great. Excellent. I think probably most of you are since this is the student chapter of the uh, SLA, but I, I just wanted to get an idea of who uh, who was attending the, the webinar tonight. Uh, and then how many of you, um, all of you, ha are familiar with uh, digital asset management? Excellent. Okay, good. Good. Okay, that's going to help me kind of figure out how much time I should be spending on some of these things. So America's Test Kitchen. Um, Bazia had, had uh, referred to a few things that, uh, that America's Test Kitchen uh, produces, um, but as a company, who, who are we? Um, our mission is to really find recipes that we like and enjoy and take them and, and make them into the best recipes that they can be uh, so that you can produce the same uh, wonderful food and dishes at home. So we, are, we literally have a 2,500 square foot test kitchen uh, in our buildings just outside of Boston, and we prepare our food sometimes 40, 50, or 70 times until we get it right. Um, to do that, we have dozens of full-time cooks, product te testers, and tasters, food scientists, who test each one of the recipes and test the, the kitchen equipment as well. And uh, during that process, we have editors and photographers that document uh, what goes on, how, how the recipes are, are doing and developing. So there's a lot of material that we create, a lot of content. We generate recipes, of course. We have re reviews of uh, the recipes and equipment. Uh, we have uh, test results, uh, kitchen tips, uh, and then the photos and videos of the, of the goings on in the kitchen. Um, there are the uh, videos both for the cooking school and, as Bazia had mentioned, of the PPS show that um, America's Test Kitchen has. There's Cook's Country as well. Um, of course, there's field research as well that's documented, and we produce um, material around that. Now, that material that we create gets put into our products, and there's quite a few. Uh, we have Cook's uh, Illustrated Magazine, Cook's Country Magazine. Um, there are various uh, special interest magazines as well as our cookbooks. There are the television, television series, and we, of course, have blog posts. But how do we, how do we share our story with, with the public and with, with you? Uh, so we have many different channels. We have uh, print, and we have the magazines, and the books. We have digital media, which includes uh, iPad versions of our magazines. Uh, we have a Kindle version as well as in, in Nook. And then we have our online uh, presence. Uh, we have websites for Cook's Illustrated and Cook's Country. We also have one main one for America's Test Kitchen, and we have kind of a blog format one that's called America's Test Kitchen Feed.com. We have uh, social media that we're on, and we, we um, divulge or share a lot of uh, various media on social media. Uh, we have sales emails and marketing material. Uh, we also have uh, the podcast t television series and podcasts. So what is digital asset management? According to the Dan Glossary, um, it's a process of storing, cataloging, searching, and delivering computer files. Really, it's, it's about the tasks that are required to manage those digital assets. And it includes in ingesting, annotating, cataloging, or identifying, storing, retrieving, distributing, or sharing assets, as well as using and reusing them. What, and there's a few elements that make up digital asset management. Uh, first and foremost, there's, uh, there's users. Who are they? And what do they do? And what do they want? How do, go, how do they go about finding what they want? Really what it comes down to is information behavior. Of course, metadata is a, is a very big, a big element of digital asset management. And metadata is used to identify assets, to describe them, 
and to preserve the assets as well as structuring data. Taxonomy is important as well. It allows us to create um, our authority lists and, and controlled vocabularies and fasori. We often call it taxonomy, though. It's really just controlled vocabularies. Um, and then, of course, there's metrics. We want to have a quantitative and qualitative data to measure the value of the digital asset management that we do. We call it uh, return on investment. We want to make sure uh, that there's something that we get back from the money that we spend in, uh, in managing our assets. And then data security is an important element as well. And that encompasses a digital rights management and the permissions that we uh, will give um, users to, to those asset, assets. Really, it's about keeping the, the material safe. Uh, there might be proprietary material or rights managed um, assets or media. And they go into the digital asset management system. There's, uh, of course, digital uh, preservation, um, which is very important. Um, we need to maintain the data integrity of our assets and, the often, and their authenticity over time. Oops. And uh, other, other things that, that are included are um, work processes or understanding those work processes, workflows. What's an important part of digital asset management is really to take those auto, those, um, those rote tasks that, that are done and automate the automate those tasks so that you could free staff up to do more creative work. And then policy and governance is important as well. That includes change management um, and also it covers the file and folder naming conventions. And really what library and information professionals would know that as is collection management um, policy. You know, what it's important to have kind of a policy in place to determine what gets kept and what gets thrown out and how long things are kept and that sort of thing. Project management is a really important um, element as well. It's really about how to get things done. So whether you're, you're, about, you're, you're figuring out whether you need a digital asset management system and what the requirements are for those, that's, that's a project that needs to be managed. Also, the evaluation of the current digital asset management uh, system is a project uh, that, of course, needs to be managed. It involves um, databases. Um, for example, how, how do tables work within the digital asset management system? So it's important to have the concept stand of what, what databases are. And of course, uh, integration is a large part of digital asset management because it, it really, that the system itself lives within a greater ecosystem within the company. So it needs to play nice with other systems. So what is a digital asset? Well, it's any file that is valuable to your organization. This can include photographs, scans, illustrations, motion graphics, videos, print layouts, 3D files. Really, it's, it's almost anything that, that is a file in itself uh, and that has value to, to the company that you work for. And what is the digital asset management system? Well, simply put, it's a database management system. And really, as I mentioned before, it's a part of the complete digital asset management or content management ecosystem. So some of the, some of the functions that, um, some of the functions that, uh, that a digital asset management uh, system offers are it uh, centralizes access to, to many different assets or most assets in the company. It supports um, or improves existing workflows. It transforms assets from one file format to another, for example, and it boosts in a, a efficiency throughout the company. And of course, the most important is it enables us to find our assets uh, more easily rather than having to dig through uh, large folder structures. Uh, and an important part of, of finding assets is really that persistent, unique identification. Um, that is listed as one of the first 10 core characteristics of a digital asset management system. There are 10 of these, and they're listed on uh, the DAM Foundation's website. Uh, it's a really good uh, association or foundation to, to take a look at if you're interested in learning more about digital asset management. So what did I, why did I choose DAM? What are some of the reasons why I am in digital asset management? Well, it's not just the suit, though it's a big component. 
Some of the reasons why I chose it um, includes the type of material um, that I manage. Because of my past experience managing uh, the editorial or video editing uh, process, um, I had a lot of experience with audiovisual assets. So being able to continue working with them was, was definitely on top of my list, list. I really enjoy the challenges that digital asset management offers. I like working with a lot of um, technolo different types of technology and people. And it's sometimes a little bit tricky because um, users will, will want things that are sometimes not um, immediately possible with the technology that we have. So there's a bit of, uh, of a, a struggle between, or rather um, a bit of a tug of war between technology and, and users. And that's a challenge that I enjoy trying to solve. And of course, um, the last reason that I have is uh, there's a lot of transferable skills um, that, uh, that I was able to, to port over from my last career into the one that I'm doing now. So my career path was, um, was definitely not a straight line, but um, when, I, when, when I was in uh, England, I found myself living in, in Oxford. Uh, the, university, the university was just a, a few blocks away. So um, I had the, the great, um, uh, great opportunity uh, given to me um, by the Ashmolean Museum, which is part of the university. I worked uh, uh, with the Eastern Art Online uh, collection. And as part of that project, what I did is I scanned a lot of print text, uh, ran it through optical character recognition, and then um, extracted that text to be used online. So if you go to the Eastern, uh, uh, Eastern Art Online uh, website, which is um, off the Ashmoleans, you'll find some of that text that I, that I pulled and that was used on the website. And what was great about that was that um, these were, were out of print books that were very difficult to access. So, so being able to, to help out making that more accessible was, was really a really great experience for me. What I also did um, around that same period was um, work at the Bodleian Library as part of the John Johnson collection of printed ephemera. And this collection was a special collection, and they had um, uh, two-dimensional uh, paper printed objects. And um, they had a category that I was um, very excited to work with. Uh, it was the cinema category. So I was able to, to take a lot of the material from, from there and catalog it. That was a great introduction to cataloging for me. And it also allowed me to, to learn more about the history of, of uh, cinema, and especially pre-cinema. During that same uh, period there, until uh, about 2013, I worked on a digital humanities project called London Stage, the London Stage project, where um, I looked at the London Times um, during the 19th century, and essentially with each, each issue, I transcribed any advertisement that had to do with a London stage. Um, it was another history lesson, and it actually, a lot of the advertisements kind of linked back into what I was cataloging with the uh, John Johnson collection. So it was really fun to, to be able to, to transcribe that, that material and then go ahead and mark it up using uh, an XML um, a language uh, put forth by the text um, encoding initiative. Uh, many of you are probably likely uh, familiar with that if you've taken a digital, uh, metadata class. Um, but that was I hardly call that work. It was really just fun. Afterwards, um, I, was, um, I was invited to work at net a -Porte. They're an e, a retail company uh, based out of London. And um, I, uh, I was able to, to manage their, their images and videos primarily. I also uh, documented workflows and uh, designed and produced uh, uh, interfaces into the digital asset management. Um, that required the use of uh, HTML and CSS. Uh, and in 2014, um, I moved back to the United States and um, uh, started work at America's Test Kitchen. And um, just last December, I graduated from uh, San Jose State University with a master's of library and information science. So uh, going back to net a -Porte very quickly, um, the DAN um, system itself contained approximately 2 million assets. Uh, as I mentioned, they're mostly images, um, but they did include some uh, videos as well. They had a collection of, um, 
of catwalk videos um, that were were from you know the 80s and 90s. It was, it was a great piece of uh, history that they're collecting and managing there. Um, there were a lot of different interfaces. It was a browser-based system, so um, it was wonderful to be able to put my skills in HTML and CSS. And CSS is a, a way, a language that you can use to to, to style uh, the HTML that you have up on a page. And then I um, um, used JavaScript to, to give those pages and those interfaces some functionality. My work included, um, also included documenting the work processes of, of the different groups that were, we were rolling into or onto the dam. Um, I uh, developed a vocabularies for the groups. Uh, I did a lot of testing, user testing of the systems and the interfaces. And I train the users on how to use the, the digital asset management system. What I also did was um, I established some uh, key performance indicators, um, which uh, are essentially just benchmarks that uh, um, helped us kind of determine what types of metrics uh, or data that we needed to collect from the digital asset management system to, to demonstrate that the system itself was returning value to the company. So what am I doing here at America's Test Kitchen? Well, um, I manage the digital asset management system. Uh, it has uh, over 750,000 assets. Um, uh, the system itself includes uh, mostly images, um, but there are um, you know, documents, office documents, and PDFs, and there are some videos as well. There are three main interfaces that correspond to the different types of users that we have. Um, there, the, there's one for the power users, which uh, allows a lot more functionality uh, than the one for the collaborators, who are generally uh, adding assets but also are appending the assets with various forms of, of descriptive metadata. So those are more for the collaborators. And then the third interface is mostly for uh, consumers of the, the digital assets. So it's, it allows for, for downloading, but it's, it doesn't it, it, it's less for, for actually cataloging uh, the, the, the assets into the system. So at the moment, we have um, about, on the system, we have about 100 users, though of those 100 users, 30 users are our mo most active uh, group of people who use it. And um, really, the types of users span uh, throughout the business. We have people in our photography department um, that use use the system as well as our design department. Uh, production, the folks who process the files uh, are very heavy users. We have editorial, the, the folks who write the articles um, um, who are using the, the asset management system. And then we have marketing and sales on the system. Now, an important component of the digital asset management system is the workflow tool. Um, and one of the things I was very excited about um, when first starting with America's Test Kitchen was that a lot of the workflows are triggered through metadata. So for example, if there's a check box that, that gets ticked, um, that triggers a process. Either the permissions uh, will be opened up so that other people can see it, or perhaps it's an automated uh, metadata um, uh, value that gets applied to, to the um, to the asset, uh, which then triggers something to happen. So that, that was quite interesting to, to me. And then, let's see, and then my work there at uh, uh, America's Test Kitchen included uh, documenting uh, work processes, um, revising our permission structure to allow people to see different things within the system. Uh, I'm also developing an enterprise taxonomy, which I'm most excited about. And I am going to be taking a look at our metadata schema to see how we could make it more, uh, more efficient, but also include additional fields there in the future. So some of the highlights that, that I've had over the last um, year, just over a year, working in digital asset management, is that Net-A-Porte I designed a control vocabulary using a, center, a user-centered approach. And essentially what that boils down to was I let I had, a, I had a way, I found a way where I could allow uh, a selected number of users during a beta trial go ahead and, and append um, keywords to, to assets. After the beta trial was over, I collected all of those keywords that were used and essentially uh, built out of that, built a controlled vocabulary um, that's still being used. So that was one of the, the highlights there. 
in the, at America's Test Kitchen, um, I have uh, identified key performance indicators or those benchmarks for the dam system. So those are those are important to have, and was you know, very very excited to have put those together. And then I've designed a diagram of our digital asset life cycle, which um, is helpful. Most of you will know what that is, but it's helpful to know the 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 life or the the different stages that an asset uh, goes through. So I wanted to talk uh, just quickly about some of the uh, foundational information, the library information courses. Um, some of these I've taken, but these kind of encompass uh, a lot of the, the areas um, that I found useful in, in my work. Um, first off, I just wanted to say that those core courses that you're that generally asked to take are very important. They give you that solid foundation um, for library information uh, work. Um, they also give you a sense of the ethics and the values of our profession, and I think those are important elements to have. One of the things going into the two jobs that I've had in DAM uh, has been really that sense um, of wanting um, the users to have access. Um, now, naturally, there are things that just can't be accessible uh, for various reasons, and that's fine, but really um, my, my goal has always been, well, let's, let's find out. Uh, what shouldn't be shown and start there and then have everything else um, available for people. Um, digital asset management uh, as a class or course, if, if your uh, university offers one, I know that uh, San Jose State does, uh, it's a great course to take. Um, it generally, if, it, if it's still the same uh, one as I took, and I think it is, um, at the end of the course you, you're uh, asked to make a, a digital asset management proposal. And that's, uh, that's great if you can pick uh, uh, an actual business, either one that you've worked with or that you are working with, and you can actually offer them that proposal. Um, you might find yourself with a job. Um, reference and information services is one of the most important um, subjects, I think, uh, because it really teaches you about how to teach um, and how to educate uh, the users, but also how to support them. Um, you're all likely familiar with uh, the um, reference uh, uh, evaluation guidelines that, that RUSA and ISLA put out. Uh, memorize those. You will use those. Uh, another course um, is project management. Um, that's very helpful just to, to be able to get, you know, organize the, the projects and get those, those done. Uh, any classes about uh, HTML, um, CSS, and XML. Uh, is very helpful, uh, especially XML. Um, and generally, most metadata uh, when you're transferring between systems is is, uh, is structured um, in XML. JavaScript is really good to have. If anything, even if you don't use it, uh, you're likely uh, going to learn um, how to read um, JavaScript and AppleScript for, for your work uh, with the digital asset management system. Um, of course, metadata is a huge component of, uh, of, of asset management, so um, courses in how to structure your data and describe the assets is good. Um, being introduced and having a solid grasp of the standards, the metadata standards is important. Uh, and really to understand why we have standards, I think that's an important part. Um, I once had someone I worked with um, ask me, well, why do we need to have standards? Can we just make up our own fields? And I, my jaw dropped. But, um, but because I knew what standards were out there and why they were around, I was able to answer his, uh, well, uh, answer uh, his comment. Uh, learning about uh, user experience and, and web usability is, is really important, especially because you'll need to know how to, to capture user behavior um, and also be able to, to conduct uh, usability testing of uh, both the digital asset management system or if you're in charge of actually building the interface, um, it's, it's helpful to, um, to be able to, to measure you know, how, how, well, how, you know, how well the users are taking to it. Uh, classes and controlled vocabulary design, very important. Uh, terms such as, or concepts such as syntax and semantics are important to grasp. Um, one of the important parts of the class that I took was facet analysis. Um, very important for being able to kind of deconstruct uh, a taxonomy, or at least I should rather say rearrange a taxonomy so that it's easier to navigate. Digital preservation, huge uh, element um, of digital asset management, um, and, and one that, of course, will help you define and then measure 
the, uh, an asset's authenticity and integrity. Um, there, I think we all could agree that um, um, migrating from one system to another or, or refreshing uh, or migrating assets is an inevitable, uh, in any case, what I was trying to say is you're going to have to do those things. So being able to, to, to define and measure um, what's important about that asset, what needs to be contained and, and kept constant through its life um, is uh, something very important to, to grasp. Um, and really just any classes about system architecture, uh, file formats, and common conversions are really helpful. So if you want to take a class in Photoshop or uh, in After Effects um, or compress, comp compressor, video compression tools. And then um, another part that's really not just a class, but something that you'll, you'll really get a sense of um, in your experience uh, as a student is how to evaluate systems. I cannot stress this enough because um, the dam uh, uh, world, the dam environment is constantly changing and, and the dam system you may be working with um, needs to change with it and you need to be able to, to measure uh, how well it's performing um, both to your users but also in the great, greater um, kind of environment in which it, it sits kind of in, in, you know, outside of the company. So, so it's good to be able to, to evaluate the system. So there's some traits I'd like to encourage. Um, one of them is uh, being approachable and communicative, uh, knowledgeable about the uh, information and library uh, science, uh, responsive, getting back to people in a timely man manners, um, very helpful, and then just being plain spoken or um, direct with folks. Uh, I think they appreciate not someone who can communi communicate without using uh, uh, jargon. Someone had a question. Is that something that we should address now or? No? I think it was just a problem with the a, system, that's all. Oh, okay. Um, so some of the things that uh, I, uh, I think are damn trends these days. Um, I think one of the questions um, on everybody's mind, uh, especially students who might be looking for work, is um, you know what's the job, a uh, job, um, uh, job, uh, you know jobs like out there, and I can say that uh, um, I do make it a point to keep an eye on the job market, and I am seeing more and more jobs though it is not totally mainstream yet. In my opinion, I think everybody needs digital asset management. I have a digital asset management system here at home. I think most of us do. Um, iPhoto is one, uh, so I have problems with that, but, uh, but we all have um, systems that we use our digital asset management, or, or we use to manage our digital assets. So um, I think it's only a matter of time before more and more companies are gonna be um, looking for people to help manage their assets. At the moment though, you need to be willing to wait for a job to open up in the area that you might be li living or uh, relocate. And the centers at the moment tend to be cosmopolitan uh, areas like New York, uh, Los Angeles, uh, London uh, as well, and then Sydney are just some of the places I've been seeing jobs uh, advertised in. Um, one of the things that I'm quick to say, and I've mentioned it um, earlier, is just technology is a fickle master. Um, it tends to change very rapidly. Just today I, I found that um, on Google Docs you can actually adjust permissions on a, on a document level, uh, giving people permission just to comment on an asset. So I think we're, we're seeing we're seeing a lot of technological change, and I think it's obvious to many of you, but um, it's good to keep be aware of that because the, the you know, digital asset management uh, is going to be changing as a response to that. So I have some suggestions to, to anyone considering uh, working in digital asset management. Um, get connected. Um, Join LinkedIn if you haven't, and there are plenty of uh, digital asset management uh, and media asset management groups that you can uh, that you can get on. Uh, if you're on Twitter, uh, follow some of the, the, the leaders in digital asset management. Um, and then, of course, my favorite technique is to look at 
who they follow and then follow those people. Uh, that's helpful. Um, and you kind of grow and expand the, the world that, uh, of, of people that you follow. Um, also attending webinars like the, this one is really helpful as well. Um, many vendors, DAM system vendors, will uh, offer webinars about DAM specific topics. And you may have to wade through, uh, you know, five minutes of, of their talking about the, the product, but, uh, but a lot of the content is very, very helpful. Um, I would like to, very much like to encourage all of you to, to be ambassadors to yourself um, and for the wider uh, information professional community. Um, attend conferences. Um, the one that I have gone to a few times has been the Henry Stewart uh, Dam Conference in Europe, in London, and I know they have one in Los Angeles and New York, and I believe one in Chicago. Um, and of course, the Special Library Association has one that's happening in Boston. So attending conferences is a great way uh, to learn more about uh, the goings on in BAM. Um, and then take some time to write about them. Um, I'd like to say that the blog that I have, um, I'd like to credit it with my job at America's Test Kitchen because um, the, the director of production uh, on more than one occasion has told me that he really liked the, the material that I wrote. So I think. Um, I think that that had a, a good influence on on how I got the, I was chosen for for the job. Um, know your specialty as well. You know what special skills and experience do you have uh, that helps you stand out from other people, um, and then you know show those with other people. And then seek to improve the profession, um, whether it's uh, it's in dam or otherwise. Um, if you have um, methods or workflows that you use, you know, introduce those. Um, talk about them in your blog or on LinkedIn and share your experiences of what works and what doesn't work. And then lastly, I think it's really important to make a point about continuing to learn. And that, uh, you know, we should all uh, be pros at it since we're, most of us are, are students, uh, but uh, be taking uh, the time to, to conduct that research. You know, take advantage of your library and then ask your connections or if you have a mentor, ask them. And there's a lot of resources out there. Out there. Uh, I mentioned the DAM Foundation. They just came out with a salary survey, uh, which is not just uh, uh, the, the, the numbers of how much people make. It's really about what kind of skills people have and what levels of skills and where they're located. So that I, I definitely encourage all of you to, to have a look at that salary survey. Um, there's the Journal of Digital Asset Management. Uh, that's put out by Henry Stewart. And they also do the DAM conferences. Um, so they put out really good um, articles about digital asset management. And then uh, take some time to, to download, find those job descriptions and download them, see what, what uh, employers are looking for. I'm finding that um, many of them are looking for, for people with MRIS de degrees. So um, do please uh, take, a, take a look at that. So I'd like to take, uh, I'd love to, to learn about what your questions are. Does anybody have any questions? Dan had a question in the text box. <laughs> Sorry, can you hear me? So I, I'm trying to get to his question. So his question was, he's in LA, and he is wondering if he had any suggestions on how he'd craft a resume for a Dan slash taxonomy slash content management job. Um, absolutely. Um, that's a mouthful. That's a lot of different um, parts of that job. Um, well, what I would suggest, uh, the DAM Foundation, if you haven't gone to their website, they have job descriptions for a digital asset management specialist, a manager, and a director. Have a look at that, and you'll see there may be bits and pieces that you can call from, from your job description. Um, and, you know, that you might want to put onto your resume. Um, in terms of finding examples of resumes, um, I'm not entirely sure uh, where you would do that, though I know that um, the, uh, um, the uh, uh, iSchool, um, which was Swiss Connect, uh, I think it's called uh, Connext, um, they're holding a resume review session if it hasn't already happened. So do please have a look at that. That might be a good place to at least get feedback on your resume. And I'm happy to take a look at it too. I'll, I'll give you my contact details in the last slide. If I can I'll make a quick plug here for um, Jill Kalish, of course. She's a great 
resource for any kind of resume or um, application questions. Okay, go ahead. You can ask your question. Hi, thank you. Um, I have a background in database management, and I've taken um, all but like one of the foundational courses you mentioned, and I um, have had two in internships that deal heavily with metadata, and I'm interested in getting um, professionally getting into. Uh, digital asset management, but I'm curious like what might be some entry points for me, and I know I can look at those job descriptions you mentioned on the DAM Foundation, but I wondered if you had anything you could share about that. Yeah, that, that's a great question, and in fact, it's come up uh, from various people that I've chatted with. Um, there isn't a... Um, there isn't a charted course uh, to get into DAM yet, uh, like there was when I was uh, a wee boy uh, wanting to work in the video profession. Um, what I would suggest is, um, you know, if you're on LinkedIn trying to connect with folks um, and just get the word out there that you're looking for, for experience. I mean, it seems to me, I mean, with their database experience, that you may be able to, to find uh, a work uh, straight off the bat, especially if you have experience with metadata. Um, one area, um, I'm not sure if you have uh, experience with um, the creative uh, pipeline or creative workflow, um, but you may, you may just want to kind of brush up on, on uh, you know, depending on whether you want to work in uh, in design or in, in video editing or production, um, you might want to brush up on that. But uh, otherwise, I think um, you're in, you're at uh, SF Noma. I know they were looking for a, a dam manager over there. Uh, <laughs> maybe stick around, and uh, you you might be able to to get some uh, some tips from them. But um, yeah, I, I think trying to connect with more people is probably the best bet. I know that there is. Um, you may or may not be familiar with uh, Dam Guru, um, but they have a, a site that you can actually post uh, your your qualifications and skills, and it's uh, a bit of a, a forum for employers to go to to find um, people that match, uh, you know, the um, the type of person they're looking for to fit a position. So you may want to look at that. Oh, by the way, I, I, I think the SF Mom is great, and yeah, congratulations on getting that, that internship. That's fabulous. Is there any, uh, any other questions? Uh, yes, there's a question from Jessica in the text box. So she asks, is this a good field for someone who needs room to be creative and self-directed? And then she has a second part. Do you want me to read the whole thing? Oh, I've got it here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so, so th thank you, Grace. So, and then the second part of the question was also, is there a su subspeciality in this field encompassing privacy, protection, cybersecurity? So, uh, cybersecurity would fall into that um, uh, security uh, um, topic there that I listed out. But um, so I guess in, in answer to your question is um, absolutely. I think um, and so far as where I've worked at Net-A-Porte and, and America's Test Kitchen, both um, both dam systems really were embedded within the creative uh, process. So if you're creative, that that is definitely going to be you know a point in in um, in your favor. Um, in terms of self-directed, uh, that's also a, a great. Um, a great aspect or, or, or trait, I would say, because um, much of the time um, folks in companies and corporations don't know what, they don't know much about information in asset management. Um, so if you're self-directed, um, it would be a good way to really go out and broadcast what it is that you do and how the how digital asset management can help. So at least in the jobs that I've been in, um, I've been very much, I've been given a lot of freedom with, with how I meet my goals. And, uh, and I think uh, being self-directed can very much work in your, uh, in your favor. So um, 
I think that's, that, that's very helpful. And then in terms of subspeciality, generally uh, cybersecurity falls under um, IT, um, so it's, it's good to know about it, uh, about the dam. Most, you know, many dams within corporations could be kind of closed off from the external world, but others um, have an extor external portal. So just understanding um, cybersecurity is important. Um, privacy protection, I think, as a library and information professional is, is very important to me. I, I tend to shy away um, from collecting private information, um, but um, I don't see that as being something that's as necessary um, in, in them, but it, I think it's a, it's a good ethical thing to, to be aware of. And Dan wants to know where the forum is you mentioned. I think he's oh. referring to the Dan Guru. Yeah, Dan Guru. Um, I will look it up. Yeah, it's just, it's literally danguru.com, but I'm going to put it into the, um, into the text chat window here. Uh, just, just as a caveat, before you, you go in and, and plug in all your, your details, a Dam Guru is um, a spin-off from a digital asset management system vendor called Picture Park. Um, so, you know, though the content in that site, is, you know, mostly seems like it's completely vendor neutral, um, just, just know that before you, you sign up. But I've always had, I've had good experiences with it. Yes. Go ahead, Kate. Um, I'm kind of curious, since you got your MLIS in 2014, I think. Yes. Um, how did you go about cataloging the John Johnson collection? Did you have, like, undergraduate schooling and in information library science? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so the, the work that I did at the John Johnson was part-time, and the, the librarian um, was kind enough to, to sit down and, and, and essentially uh, walk me through the process of cataloging material. Um, she also had a lot of documentation around how to do that. So um, though I had not taken a, uh, an official cataloging uh, course, um, I was able to work um, with that collection, because really the content type, the genre, was 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 didn't vary from just being paper based two dimensional uh, objects. So, though the the content on that paper was varied, um, you, you know, it was a matter of of just learning and knowing how to apply the taxonomies and vocabularies that are the authority from the authority list that we were using. Um, so. Um, I hope that answers your question, but I, I hadn't gone through the program yet when I worked there. Um, for me, it was really uh, kind of a great opportunity to both put, uh, but learn more about cataloging, uh, but also to put some of the things that I'd gotten from those foundational courses into use. He has a question in the chat box, and I have a similar question. So. I will ask it and then add my question. Um, do you work with other dam specialists, or is it just you? And I was just wondering how big of a department um, you worked in. Um, that, those are great questions. So the net uh, the company, uh, the net uh, group, uh, was uh, 3,000 people. Uh, so it was a large corporation. Um, they had branches all over the world, so it was a global company, a global brand. Um, we had a team of three people. So there was me, there was the lead technician, and there was a, a digital asset management coordinator. So that was the team that I belonged to. I know that they're growing that somewhat. And, and in fact, they just recently, after I left, they were looking for a, uh, they were looking for a damn librarian specifically. So that, you know, hopefully that'll paint one picture of, of that aparte. Um, at America's Test Kitchen, uh, I am the only damn or a digital asset management person um, that, that works for the system. Um, there is a, uh, another uh, colleague um, 
who uh, I work closely with who um, specializes in workflow and in integration. And we're doing a bit of cross-training so that I can learn a little bit about what he does and he can help support the digital asset management system. But in terms of just digital asset management, it's just me. Um, but I am part of a, uh, of a larger uh, um, department in, in, uh, at America's Test Kitchen. Um, it uh, includes um, uh, two other people outside of myself and the workflow and integrations person. Um, there's my manager and there's the director. And um, it was a newly formed uh, department uh, really to, um, to manage, uh, to choose and select and to evaluate our, our technology systems. Um, and uh, you know, going into the job, I was very excited about that because the people I was going to be working with, my manager and the director, have a lot of um, experience uh, with the company, but also in project management and uh, in, in rolling out new systems and improving the existing ones. So I felt like though I'm the only damn person, uh, there's a lot of, uh, between the four of us, uh, there's a lot of experience uh, from, from which to, to pull. Thank you. That's very helpful. And Dan has a question on the text box. Of the foundational courses you mentioned earlier, did you take them all through at San Jose State University iSchool? Keep, keep those questions coming, Dan. This is great. Um, uh, yes, all of them, all of the, uh, the, those courses that I listed um, were taken uh, at San Jose State University. However, um, there was a couple on there that I think I put down among them may have been collection management. I'm, I'm unsure whether I, I left that on the slide or not. Um, I did not take that course, but I know that there was something uh, offered that I wanted to take, but it never kind of fit my schedule. Uh, but it was specifically about uh, um, managing digital collections. Uh, but I know that that's something that, that, that is offered, though I don't think it's regularly offered. Any other questions? I had a question. <laughs> um, your, if you describe the department and your job, it seems highly technology oriented. Which is, what would be the percentage that you would say the job is more IT and less information science or the other way around? So it really depends on the day. <laughs> on some days, all I'm doing is, is working with a system. Uh, and on other days, I'm conducting uh, card sorting exercises, which, by the way, work. And I really love them. Um, uh, often, I take meetings to discover what uh, the various user groups uh, would like or what things are working and are, are not working. Um, and um, so, so it's a, it really depends. Um, on, on what comes up. Uh, I think in terms of the nuts and bolts of librarianship and information science, you know, talking about um, building those controlled vocabularies or taxonomies, um, I think that I've been doing less of, but I'm shifting over to doing much more of that uh, because of this taxonomy project. Um, I'm not sure what other specific things uh, I, can, I can give you as examples. Um, but I have to say that the reference work, reference desk-like work, is a big component of, of digital asset management. Uh, I am always feeling questions from people about, um, you know, I'm looking for this asset, where is it? Or can you help me get access to this, this object? Um, I'm on several different um, distribution uh, email lists, and I'm always kind of eavesdropping to, to, to see, um, you know, what what sort of um, problems people are trying to solve in their everyday work lives. And if they have to do with assets or, or rich media, um, I often kind of poke, you know, poke my head in and say, you know, can I help you with that? Or um, this seems like, you know, we should be doing it this way or what have you. So um, big, another big component is that reference, reference desk work. Uh, that's great, and the, uh, being proactive is important in that case. 
Um, and Seema has a question in the chat box. Um, what are other educational resources? She's graduating this semester, so looking for other options. So other educational resources um, is a great, is a good question. Uh, so in terms of continuing your education, uh, the DAM Foundation, uh, so they're at the, the DAM, D-A-M, foundation.org. Um, they offer a, I, believe, I, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but I think that they offer a certificate, pro, um, a certificate in DAM. And it's a, they have a curriculum uh, that's comprised of various different courses that go over a lot of the different subjects I mentioned about them. Um, so you can go there for continuing education. Um, um, King's College offers a master's of, of um, uh, I think it's media management. Um, Though if you're in MLIS, that may not help you. But I think they're probably open to the idea of doing a PhD if you want to teach uh, or, or further your, your education. Um, and just keeping uh, um, keeping your knowledge and education up. Um, the, there's a digital asset management news. Um, there's a lot of other uh, blogs, such as uh, another damn blog, um, which is wonderful. Uh, has much great content just about uh, various aspects and current thinking. Um, CMS Wire is another good place to go to for, for information just about current trends. Uh, right now there's a big discussion about um, whether um, the dam systems and the vendors have really fall, fallen behind on innovation and development of the dam systems. So, um, you know, I think once you um, you go into LinkedIn or go to some of these sites, you'll begin to pick up on some of the trends in the thinking. Uh, and it's a good way to keep abreast of um, that wave of um, um, thinking and trends and um, you know, where things are headed. Um, thank you, Jan. We have one more question, and we're getting to the end. Do you mind answering one more? Of course. So Jan in the chat box is asking, are there opportunities available for freelance work to gain experience? Um, I'm just going to put up my slide for anybody who, who, who'd like to, to reach me outside of the, uh, this webinar. Um, so in terms of gaining freelance work, um, yes. Um, Yes, there is. Um, so freelance work, there, there are some jobs that are temporary, which I know isn't freelance, but that, that may be uh, something that could interest, um, interest you. Um, there is also, let's see, there are um, opportunities as a consultant, perhaps. Though being a damn consultant, you'll have needed to, to have been doing digital asset management for a while. Um, to be able to do cons consultancy, but that's kind of like freelance. But in terms of a, kind of a gun for hire, um, one of the areas could be um, metadata and taxonomy or controlled vocabulary um, uh, creation or development. So you can freelance as someone to provide that service uh, for different companies who might require it. Um, that can be an area that, that you can freelance. Um, so if you like that freelance lifestyle, I think there are some, some real opportunities there. And I'm not sure if it's a quick question. Do you know if DAM is the same in all languages? Um, that's a very good question. Um, I'm, I'm half French, and I don't know how to say digital asset management in French. Um, I'm going to have to look into that. That's a stumper. Um, I will have to. I will have to give, some, give that some thought. I, I think it. It. it uh, I don't know. I don't even want to venture a guess because I might be wrong. I'm not sure. And anybody else know whether there's another word for digital asset management in, in other language? No. No, that's very funny. This is Bash. Yeah. I had not heard of any. Uh, other terms for it, so I'm just going to assume for the time being that this is sort of one of those international terms. However, um, XML and the other descriptive languages that are being used right to describe the, the digital assets are the same across the board, correct? 
Uh, indeed, yeah. So XML, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's an international standard. Uh, so is TEI. You know, there are many different uh, concepts as, as well um, that are known internationally. Though I, I know that digital asset management exists in Germany because they produce, uh, um, well, in Switzerland as well, they produce digital management systems. So they, they must have a word for it. Or maybe they just use DAM. I don't know. Well, thank you very much for, for having me. It's been wonderful speaking with you and, and sharing some of my experiences. And I, I do hope that uh, you'll reach out to me, and uh, I'd love to continue the, the conversation. Thank you very much, Jan. This was a wonderful presentation. And um, we will stop the recording now. <laughs>